So, um, so this is what the question is saying. It says, suppose that your measured weight at the equator. Okay, let me just start drawing diagrams since it's uh, talking about equator and whatnot. So I guess I'm imagining a planet of some mass that's uh, spinning like many planets do. And so there's an equator, which will be one set of in interesting points. And it's saying that for someone who's standing on the equator, that they I can't draw my people sideways. So for someone who's standing at the equator, that they feel some kind of weight. Um, or technically, you know, there's some gravitational force and the measured weight is actually the normal force that's acting on the normal force that's on this person. So your measured weight uh, at the equator. Um, so this equator is equal to the weight measured at the pole, uh, one half divided by two. That's what it's claiming. So for the similar person up here, um, so there's still gravitational force pulling this person inward, and there's going to be a normal force um, uh, supporting the person up. And um, on a planet whose mass and the diameter or radius, uh, I mean, that they're equal to those of Earth, and it's asking what is the rotational period of the planet. Okay, yeah, uh, assume that this plane is somewhat approximately spherical. So if uh, after reading through this question and possible, possibly diagramming everything, if it feels like um, you don't have all the information, I, I think that's an uh, um, okay feeling to have. The skill that you are developing in a physics class is the kind of problem-solving skill where you work with a minimal or limited set of information. So this question does give you all the information you need to figure out the rotational period of this planet. But um, <laughs> until you build up your physics problem solving skill, it can be difficult to, to see that it does. Um, so let me just start out with um, kind of the starting place because uh, the question is telling us two different points where you are examining the forces. So I think it, uh, um, I feel like it would be useful to examine those um, locations in some detail. Try to figure out what information comparing those two places, pole and equator, are giving us. So the picture at the pole is the simplest picture. When you're looking at this picture, well, um, so you have your free body diagram of the person, gravity pulling the person down, normal force supporting the person up. And I feel like the in this picture, acceleration is zero. The person is just resting on the pole, not going anywhere rotating this way, but that doesn't really involve any acceleration up or down. So uh, we can quickly conclude up. Oh, so this normal force at the pole should just be the weight, uh, uh, the gravitational force on that person. So, okay, so that's where we are starting. And since the normal force on the equator is different from the normal force at the pole by the way it's worded in the question. So something different must be going on with this picture. So let me draw the free body diagram and I'm just for my own sanity, I'm gonna just throw it right side up. <laughs> so for the person at the equator, there's gonna be a gravity pulling the person down. And I guess I'm drawing this normal force at the equator. So that it's a half of that or it's going to be the half of the gravitational force. So I don't see any reason for the gravitational force to change. So it will be the same force. Is it just a approximately spherical, same distance from center, no reason for it to change. So as I'm looking at it, I'm 
seeing that okay so the person is accelerating downward and i'm trying to think it through is that um physically reasonable picture to have for someone who's standing still at the equator and i hope after not too long of a thinking of it you come to realize oh this is describing a uniform circular motion so there is going to be centripetal acceleration so this centripetal acceleration will be given by v squared the kind of the rotational speed of the person divided by r the radius at which the person is spinning the equatorial radius so this is the key realization you need to uh, to make a progress in this question that um, this uh, difference in the this difference in the uh, force is going to be tied to the downward acceleration and that you can tie it to the, the centripetal acceleration so uh, so let me just uh, write out some cleaned up version of expression. So um, my net force, the downward net force is going to be uh, Fg minus half of Fg. So that's going to be still half of Fg. And that will be the uh, mass of the person times V squared over R. Uh, let me write out Fg in terms of parameters that involve this mass. So in hopes of, um, in hopes of simplifying uh, some of the expressions. So Fg should be m times g. Um, so this is g, let me put a prime on it to caution you that this may not be the uh, oh, you know what? It is going to be since the planet's mass and diameter are equal to those on Earth, and just looking at this picture, I think that is going to be the same g on Earth. So, to the extent that you may need the value of g, I think we can still use g is equal to nine point eight meter per second squared because I have this location at the pole. So, with that, but having written this out, I can cancel out the m. So I don't need to know the mass of the person. It's a little bit of a relief. So I'm working with the, uh, oh, one unknown, because I don't, uh, I know the radius uh, of this planet, radius of Earth, it's even given here. So the, um, so the, and since uh, we are assuming the mass of the planet is the same as Earth, that's what leads to us being able to use this still. So it comes down to, okay, I don't know V, and this V is not the same thing as the period of uh, rotation. So I need to just uh, come up with some expression that relates to this uh, uh, rotational, the tangential velocity at the surface of the uh, planet with its uh, rotational period. So I think that, okay, um, V, that's speed, which is given by distance or time. Mm. So for someone also on the surface here, so let's use time of a period since that's what we are getting at. So in one period, the distance that the person travels will be the equatorial circumference. That will be two pi times the radius of the planet. Oh, so that will give me V in terms of Think uh, all the known quantities and p, which we are trying to find. So let's uh, take these equations one and two, combine it. Um, oh, let me just move this all. All right, so let me combine these two expressions to um, and finish up the algebra. So combining these two, I'm just plugging in it for v. I have g over two times this thing squared. 2 pi r squared over p squared divided by r, or sorry, g over 2, that's the left hand side, that's equal to this right hand side. Okay, I see, uh, let me just do some simplification here. I'm going to distribute this square into here so that I have 2 pi squared and I have r squared 
a factor of which cancels out with this. So I have this p squared on the denominator here, which I can move over to the left, move everything else over to the right to result in p squared is equal to the 2 times 2 pi squared or 8 times pi squared times r, that's one factor of r that remained, the whole thing divided by g. To make sure I didn't um, uh, make any algebra mistakes, let me just uh, check the unit. I have a meter on the numerator, meter per second squared on the denominator from g, meters cancel. Uh, so second squared on my numerator, which matches with the period squared. Okay. So, so yeah, I think that's uh, almost it. I just need to take the square root um, to get rid of that square. So I think I have all the numbers to plug in. I mean, plug in the numbers and get the period in, um, in, in the unit of seconds. So just going to type in my expressions here. So 8 times pi, oops, 8 times pi squared times the radius of Earth, 6.37 times 10 to the power of 6 in basic SI units, um, divided by 9.8 meter per second squared. So that's the quantity under the square root. Let me take the square root. I have a period of 7,000 and 7,164 seconds. Hmm. I have no intuition for if that's a big or small number. Let me just uh, divide that by 60, um, just so that I have some sense of how what how the number compares. So that's the period in minutes. Oh, yeah, divided by 60 again for period in hours. So this planet apparently spins once every two hours spinning like 10 times as fast as Earth is. Uh, let's make sure <laughs> my numbers are right, 7164. And I guess that uh, goes to why um, the question thought somewhat unrealistically that the planet is approximately spherical. So the Earth is approximately spherical, but Earth also spins at 10 times slower speed. Unless this planet is made up of a much sturdier material, it's definitely going to be more um, ellipsoidal shape. Um, that's not quite uh, spherical. So, so yeah, I think this is the one main question that I thought um, involved quite a few steps that I haven't done before that uh, was worth doing. So.